All right, mic check, mic check. Morning Masters podcast, I was made of course. Got a special guest across me, man, my, my boy Cooks. Back in the building. On, man? <laughs> Last time you was here, we, we did Made in Slim. And um, I always talk to Slim, we talk about that episode a lot. It was probably one of our most entertaining episodes. We got a lot of feedback from that episode. Um, of course, you know, when you never you talk about uh, gender type of uh, topics, you get a lot of feedback on it. You had some people that agreed and some that didn't. It was just more entertaining than anything, though. It was funny, though. Oh, yeah. Um, had a good time. Nah, definitely, definitely. So what you been up to, man? Uh, nothing. Just bartending, talking trash on the internet, being a dad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know I'm going to start out there because I'm going to start from the beginning, start right there. Like, I, I was telling you off air, of course, uh, a lot of times I talk to people, or whether it's a woman or something like that, and they'll ask me if I know you. And a lot of times, what I find from in the conversation is uh, that some people are actually scared to post on your status on <laughs> Facebook because they feel like they'll be the victim of, I don't know, you going back and forth or, I don't know, you know, we, 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 we had that little Kevin Samuels era, so they felt like they was getting that kind of treatment sometimes. Oh, man. I mean, but the comment section is for debate. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... A lot of people say I, I be bashing, and I don't never, pro, you know, post nothing that's like shows hatred towards women. No, nah. I might I might post stuff that I hear I see happen. I might see another status, you know, and 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 just post it. You know what I mean? Or it might be song lyrics sometimes, right? Or it could be just something we we as men have had in just co- general conversation that we don't necessarily share with women, and they might not like it. They don't always have to agree, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't even always agree with the shit I post sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's it's really just to create the conversation. Nah, it's funny because I remember one time you were doing that. And I guess because we have a lot of mutual friends. It's Augustus, so of course. A lot of us have mutual friends in common anyway. But I would know, like, one person to post this and you'll post the same thing. But from the male perspective, whether it's lyrics or whatever. Right. And then what you'll find is your comment session be different from theirs, though. Oh, completely. Because they not they not even know it's from a song, the, it's the lyric immediately nothing. Triggered. <laughs> triggered out the gate. And I was like, yo, I literally took a post that was about dudes, changed it from dude to her, and people losing their shit. And the, the funny thing about that is that's why I was saying like, you got that um I don't I am I'm still trying to think of a word of, of what it is, but you know, your name is your name, and I think that's kind of what's what what's happening. Like you be you be not becoming, but you were being looked at as uh, the person who has strong opinions, I guess, about women or gender gender specific opinions or whatever the case may be. And some people call it strong, but it's like it's an opinion. You know what I mean? I wouldn't call it strong because we all got an opinion. Just because I'm willing to verbalize it, you, you, people get offended. Reputation. That's the word. Man, yeah. I don't know why I couldn't find I, I was trying to look for it for like yeah, five yeah, minutes. Like, Reputation. People Damn. try to jump up, down my throat about, oh, you always saying this, that, and the third. But I was like, hold on. If I literally screenshot it, all the stuff I see about us all day, you'd have to turn your notifications off. <laughs> Do you think it's hard for you like now? Because like, say, say you come on social media and you, you want to talk um, or you just want to post something regular. Do you find that your regular post or post that's not gender specific get ignored or, or you feel like it's mm, pretty even with the engagement. Sometimes, sometimes. I, I, start, I feel like people look for look for that from you now too. Yeah, like yeah. Even though you got your, your select few that's like weary on commenting or they might feel strongly about how they feel, you know, you might be or whatever just based on social media, quote unquote, which is irony in itself. But I also feel like you got that group that like, that look forward to it. Yeah, and I do. Like, that's just kind of funny. Because like, I even got females that are like, I look forward to your post every day. Because, to be honest with you, it's some females that that feel the way you feel about the female post you post. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'll be real. This might this might be unpopular opinion. This might rub some people the wrong uh-oh, way. Uh-oh. Most of the chicks that agree in relationships. <laughs> see, there you... <laughs> and see, that, that that's a strong opinion right there. <laughs> I mean, funny. yeah. I mean, and mind you, I'm just going off what I see. Nah, I, I, that's funny though. But um, <laughs> you gonna find a way to throw your little jab in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, and it's all good, you know. Um, but I, I, aside from stuff like that, like I know you, it's a couple things you do that I do want to talk about. Just in general, like my goal is always to highlight things in the city, things that's going on in the city, people that's doing things in the city, and um. I initially was actually supposed to have an episode today with um, Jamie Barbie, 
the woman who threw the event, the um, August, like mm, they had yeah, the awards yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. I don't know her personally, but yeah, I don't know either personally. Um, but something came up, so um, that was early in the day, and I was thinking like, well, I had a set goal of who I wanted to interview by a certain time, and you were the next one after, so I'm gonna just push him up. So I commend, I applaud you, commend you, and give you kudos for that because uh, this was like last minute, you know. So oh, I appreciate yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Shoot, I appreciate you having me. I, on the flip side of that, though, I do want to bring this up. I'm going to bring it up for the next few episodes, though. I also have had in the last maybe two months, not the last month, where, like, two people done kind of, not even say canceled, but kind of canceled slash stood me up a little bit. And I don't know how I feel about that because, like, you know, you take a lot. You know, you're a busy man. You, you're, you're a dad as well, just like me. It take a lot to, to, to really, you know, you come in, you set up, you do your stuff, and then you don't hear from the person. It's like, yo, what's going on? Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. I'm big so on I, like, respecting people's time. Like, yes, yeah, so I feel like they got to see me. I don't know. I feel like we got to have a, a yeah, real yeah, conversation yeah. like outside just to understand like why, what went on that you couldn't just tell me, hey, I can't do this right, right now. Right, right. But um, can we reschedule? That's a that's another time for another. Right. Um. But anyway, bartending, that's something you do right now. Yeah. Right? Um, I really want to dig into that. We'll dig back into social media and stuff like that, too, because I have questions about you bartending and that pain a factor as well because mm-hmm. it's just a small city. But um, how'd you get into that, actually? Um, bartending was something I always wanted to do. Um, I just always thought it was kind of cool. You what know what, what I mean? made you always want to do it? Just just, um, just like the freedom you get with it. You know, uh, I like the creativity. You know what I mean? Um, you get to meet people from all walks of life that you may not necessarily cross paths with in your career mm. or on a day-to-day basis. You know, um, you almost get to be people's counselor, their therapist. You know, um, make them happy. You know, sometimes they come in to be sad on purpose. And you, gotta, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I enjoy, like, I enjoy the social part for the most part. Definitely. I remember last year you had um, some bartenders on on your podcast, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them I had on mine. And I, I I wonder if that was inspiration, but you just been had that kind of. Yeah, I always kind of wanted to do it. But the heart, the problem was that as a, as a dude, I couldn't get in the door. Well, so okay, so um, let's, let's talk like, about that. Well, because the majority of the nightlife, I guess, here in Augusta, they only cater to female employees for the most part. Mm. You know, in the the small group of dudes are that are in it, um, are uh, of a particular uh, ilk, so to speak. So let's say let's talk about nightlife for a second. I guess so. When you think about nightlife or club life, or whatever. Um, I would assume for the male portion or men portion, I'm not sure what to say male, men, female, woman. I don't know no more. It's all these different words, right? Right, right. It's, I'm going to just say a, both and a, call it a day. It's hard to walk the line these Word, because I can see them now. Don't say woman. Yeah, say female. Like, don't say female. Like, say yeah, woman. Like some of the... Yeah, they'll ahead. correct us anyway. So right. It's you, so they'll just feel like you do it on purpose. Of so course. It's all good. Thank God for you being here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the shot. It's all good. <laughs> but... Um, in, in, the, in that nightlife, you have the DJ, which I would assume that's... That's more of a male driven, mm-hmm. uh, um, and that's about it. In, in, inside the club, right? Yeah, and maybe the host. Majority, majority of everybody else is female. Because they know, you, you got know bottle I mean? girls. I, I, I assume yeah. there's no bottle boys. I mean, and, that'd be um, weird. And the thing was is that the women I noticed they could get in the door just off being cute, mm-hmm. with no experience, nothing. You know, as far as bartending, or just yeah. a, just just a job in, in general. Wow. Yeah, or even yeah. Bartending. I'm gonna stick to that part because the bottle girl stuff. I mean, that's that's common but, sense though. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't get in the door. You know what I mean? Like people were just like nah, nah, nah. So I was like, what can I do to keep somebody from telling me no? So I went to professional bartender school. So I'm a mixologist by trade, like national. Oh certified. wow. So okay, let me ask you. So there are bartenders, I guess, in a city that's that's that aren't licensed or I don't think yeah, they might the, be, they might've learned at home or just through club experience or they made it work their way up from a waitress or something of that okay. nature. Or some of them just, they was cute, had a fat ass and somebody <laughs> gave them an opportunity. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, um, <laughs> with that being said though, like wh- how long did it take you to actually get this trade? And, and um, which, what, was, what was the steps you had to take to do that? Well, um, I was looking up classes online, and I was like, well, "Shoot, I'm, I'm gonna go to the A." You know, my, I got my, I got family there. You know, so uh, paid right. for the class. Um, it was like a, <clears throat> it was a hands-on, you know, a uh, sixty-hour class, and um, where well, you learn everything from from your basic, you know, uh, hen and coke to your, you know, your tiki drinks, frozen drinks, mm. martinis, you know, the whole nine yards. Damn. Okay. So, and when you when you decided to actually um, 
go full throttle with that? Did you know in the back of your mind, like, once I get this, they can't tell me no? Or? Um, It's going to be harder for you to tell me no. Now it's a bigger issue. Gotcha. So they're telling you no before. Be, they would use pretty much you're not licensed or you're not experienced or whatever the case may be as the reason. But now or, or just I'm more qualified than the person or, you have doing it right now. Or just because they ain't want no dudes. I mean, let's be, let's be, you know, straight up about it, you know. Um, but when I come back and I got this certification, if you're telling me no, it's for a different reason. So let's talk about the bartending because I see you do a lot of this and I don't know a lot about it. So this is more informative for me too. Um, what, what exactly is the job of the bartender in regards to the nightlife? Um, personality, you know, you got you to gotta be personable. You know, um, speed, um, precision, you know, as far as like your ability to c- consistently make the drink the same way all the time. Mm. Um, of course, maintaining the bar, keeping it clean and um, providing a good customer experience. Ultimately, you know, sometimes it gets harder if it's busy. You know, sometimes you can't have that uh, like build rapport, so to speak. Right, right. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah, you got to put the drink down onto the next, you know. So. I know, I know a lot of times like you might be like, I'm here tonight, I'm here tonight. What's that? Is that something you have to do or that's something you just choose to do? Does that help the actual business that you're going to be bartending that night like to promote it like that? Um, or is it in the job to promote at all? Far, being a bartender, it's almost like self-promotion, keep your pockets full. You know what I mean? So you almost build clientele no different than a hairdresser got or you. a barber. You know what I mean? Because I got people that they only come to me. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll come wherever I'm at, you know, because they enjoy what I give them. Whether it be personality, um, consistency, speed, whatever the case may be, they may follow me for particular reasons. So, as far as, far as the nightlife um, and you actually doing this bartending thing, how does the scale go? Because we had Kid Joe here, we was talking about, you know, setting prices and this, that, and the third. I would assume, and he, we mentioned bartending in that particular episode, and I think, I ain't trying to put you out there, but I, I think that we were saying, like, or he was saying, rather, that the person that probably makes the most that night as far as the jobs are considered might be the bartender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make I probably make more than any DJ does getting paid in a go so I can almost guarantee it. That's wild. Not wild in like in a bad way. It's just like I you know, you you know when you don't know, you don't you know you're not really you know right, sure right. when you're coming up about what this is that and this is that and third. But yeah, when he said that, it kinda put me like, okay, well damn, I can see why somebody would want to do this versus that. Um and then you like you like what you do. Yeah, it's fun, you know. I, I and, and then as a me being a uh, of a minority in this as like a straight dude, it's a totally different experience for me. Okay, I'm glad you see. You, 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 I could tell you kind of do this on a regular because we. It's, that's some. I, I wasn't sure show and bring it up, but even that in that nightlife is that kind of hard. Cause I watched uh, sit down with I watched you on sit down with Slim. A couple weeks ago, I'm not sure, two or three weeks ago, but you've you been on it so much, I don't know. You're like, you like, you like an honorary member at this right, point. Right, right. Um, but I watched on then, you were saying that, um, of course, even though you're working and you're bartending, it's going to be some kind of sometimes uncomfortable moments too. Oh, yeah. It's a small Most city. Definitely. Most definitely. It's a small That's city. Slim right there. Um, there goes Slim calling. That's how you do, man. Slim always trying to call you when you're recording. Slim, we're recording right now. I'm recording with Maine right now. My nigga. I was just about to say some bullshit to you too. I'm glad I got down. I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll hit you right back. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Slim. <laughs> shout out to Slim. Big shout out to Slim. But I seen you on on his podcast, actually. Just, that was funny, right? On his pod, and um, you was actually talking about a situation where, you know, you did have to, um, you were bartending and somebody... What well, either was they wasn't straight they they was gay, and you felt like they kind of was trying you. Yeah. And if you remember, if you go back in time, it's funny how I still go full circle because the first time I ever had you on my podcast was kind of the same thing. Right. And we made a post and we kind of did over the phone at the time, but we talked about it. Um. So, like, how do you how do you how can you how can you maneuver through that situation and still kind of get the job done, be professional, be a, mm. be the bartender you know you can be at a top at the top level. And still go through the night, and then come the next time, and still kind of right, right, right. Um, it took some getting used to. I ain't gonna lie. Like I, my my temper used to be real, real short. You mm. know what I mean? Like, but then I realized like 
if somebody see me go off, it could affect the next dollar. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, like, so if you see me yelling at this person over here, da 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 I'm cursing them out, whatever the case may be, because they done rub me the wrong way. You're going to, oh, he has an attitude now. You know, your yeah. approach towards From a distance, you don't know what's yeah. going on. You just see you, you know acting belligerent. It's like, I ain't hiring him. Oh, I don't need him at yeah, my club. Or I'm not getting my drink from him. You know, ah, or, even or that. You might not tip me as much as you may have pre, you know, prior to seeing that. You mm. know, um, and then also like, I don't want to lose my job. You know what I'm saying? It, you said something just now, and you said that somebody might watch and not want to tip you as much as they would have or at all. You know, whatever. Yeah. So is it hard in those situations to not react? Because no matter how you react, and you, and I don't know if you are or not, but you, you know, you, most of us may not be. But because of disrespect, when you do address some kind of situations, it can come off as homophobic. Right, right. And I try to, in, in instances like that, I do try to avoid coming off as homophobic by getting the attitude or overreacting right. or, or acting out of character. But it's like, but in, in the same reference, like, okay, how but you handle it? Because at, at first, you like, time you do got to be stern. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, there comes a time where you got to be like, hey, bro, look, chill. Because if you like, laugh it off, sometimes people take laughing off as, like, oh, I'm okay. getting closer. Oh, I can keep trying. Oh, right. I can, I'm going to take another step. Or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to push the arm up a little bit. Inch, inch and mile. You know, I'm going right. to take another inch. You know what I'm saying? So you got to kind of stop it at that point right there. But when anybody watching, I know it's kind of right, hard right. to write. And, and what sucks is that, you know, I, lo- I love Augusta. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shout out to Augusta, man. You feel me? But, I, I mean, I can say that and also still criticize it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because Augusta, someone has a small city mindset. You know, like me being behind the bars a straight dude. People that don't know me, I, I deal with it every shift. Somebody says, yo, is he, like a woman might say, oh, he cute, but is he gay? Mm. Why is that your first assumption? Because hmm. if you've ever left the Augusta, left traveled anywhere to and go out, ninety percent of your bartender is gonna be a dude. You see the movies. I mean, I see that. I see. I, I, I eat at Longhorns a lot. I'm not trying to say I'm rich and I'm that. I like like Longhorns, but you see a lot of male um, bartenders there as well. I, I'm not. It's not uncommon right. to me to see that. But I'm not also not from here like that. Right. And, and and see, I'm used to seeing males, but to assume that I'm a homosexual just because you're a bartender, right? It is is a very small. That, that's a, a very ignorant concept. Did you ever think when you when you started to do bartending that, that would be a thought that would, that would be a thing? Um, very. It, it crossed my mind a little bit. Got you. You know what I mean? But like, um, I know I ain't got no problem with gay people, man. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's just like I don't. Want, are there, so is, is there a lot of gay bartenders or something like that? Um, as far as the male ones. Oh, okay. Okay. So the majority of okay. the of the club life men. Are uh uh would be cons- yeah are, are gay. People. So I mean I, I I get your point and I get but I guess it's also not far fetched to have that thought if they if they do know that most because because in the nightlife you you got to understand people drinking mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying if a guy if a guy likes dudes he's gonna hit on dudes true and if, and if that happens to me I just have to know how to maneuver. You know what I'm saying? Is that uh, something you're like still learning, women? or like um, is it case by case basis? Because case by case, this is Augusta. People, some people like I've run into situations where people, are, people are like real aggressive. I'm like, yo, bro, nigga, you got to chill the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, I don't. I, that ain't me. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Other times, it's like, hey, bro, <laughs> uh, you know, I might laugh out, <laughs> chill. You know what I mean? We can keep it moving. You know, but every once in a while, you got to put your foot down. And I would assume too. Because it's, it's Augusta um, and it's kind of homey, you know, homey, homey town. S- some people, you know, I, you shouldn't be trying me like that. Like, you know yeah, me. Some, I, you some, know? And that's the times where I'd be like, yo, don't disrespect me, yo. Got you. Got you know you. what I'm saying? Like, you you, you know what the fuck going on, you know, and, and that does happen sometimes. Now, on the flip side of it, though, um, I've probably, I've never been more, uh, what's the term? Uh, sexually assaulted <laughs> more in my life <laughs> since I've been a bartender by well, women. So talk about that, like the nightlife, what you're doing like that. Like what what's what's the vibes like for you? Like with I guess with quote unquote customers. Um, I mean, um it, it it's kinda crazy. You know, like some some women like women feel like it's an open door to flirt to like to to go the extreme. You know what I mean? Like and if if a man did that, it wouldn't be tolerated. Which is funny because 
when I had the um, two bartenders on when they were doing that studio, that was a that was a, a conversation we had. And I remember how deep it got during that conversation because they was like how they would cover for each other or when you see somebody acting creepy or being too flirtatious, whatever. You laugh, you want to you know let it go, but you kind of got to let somebody know just in case. But on the flip side for you, it's like what what like you, it's, you can't do that on your end. You can't go say, hey, look, man. My man, she 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 being overly sexual, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, <laughs> he might laugh at you and be like, okay. Like as the straight guy, like it, because I'm in limited quantity, I have an advantage. Mm. Cause just like no different than dudes like looking at chicks, chicks like looking at dudes. True. So for me, for some some women would consider me like their eye candy behind the bar. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like they come, they just like to look at me. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or have a guy make they drink. You know what I'm saying? I'm the dude that'll flirt with flirt with her to the point where she go home and want to fuck her nigga. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, I'm I'm that guy. You know, some chick I've had I've had some I've had chicks come behind the bar, give me lap dances. I've had chicks like kiss me in the mouth across the bar. Oh, that seems wild. Yeah. It seems um, a little wild. I had a lady at Velvet slap me in the face once. You was okay with that? No. <laughs> I mean, it was it wasn't hard, but it was like on them like she said it was like on some like kiss the cook kind of shit. Like she enjoyed the drink. I was like, but baby, you couldn't have just told me that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's, like that's you had a, to put your hand because I first responded like, yo, what the fuck you doing? What about the kissing mouth? Did you did you uh, prove that? She was fine. So. Okay, I, <laughs> I wasn't I doing that. With no, I had to, had, to, had to go back to that one. I had to make yeah, sure. She I had to was make fine. sure. She was fine. Yeah, I ain't doing that with no no bucket. Is it is it hard to? Bartend and flirt if you don't feel they're attractive. No, no. Um, Cause that, to me, that's part of the job. I make them feel good to make them give me money. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm a when them chicks walk in, big, small, ugly, pretty, baby, you look good. <laughs> I How like you that. Doing? <laughs> what brings y'all out tonight? Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. I do stuff like I wear cologne and I put it on my hands because I move my hands a lot. So when I brush past women, they smell. Ah. Me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, it's little little tricks to the trade that I do, you know, it, to try to separate myself because I can't compete with like titties and ass and shit. Like, no, nah, it makes sense. It makes I, sense. I, had, I really gotta earn my stripes. What 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 you what, what you typically bartend at? Like, what's your what's your what's? Oh, I can't. I'm gonna ask you. You don't have to answer it. You could just answer it differently way. But what's some of your favorite spots to bartend? I hate to ask you that question because mm. then I feel like. I think I like all the spots I bartend at for different reasons. Okay, so you know, tell like, me some of the spots you're doing. What reasons you like? Like me? studio, I only work during the week there, you know, and I like that crowd. You know, so Monday through Friday, money, spend money during the week. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So I got my regulars. You know, I can build rapport with people. You know, it's not like that wall to wall packed. You know what I mean? Um, people come after work. You know, um, and I get to have a good time with them. You know, I, it's not. The, that super super fast pace where I don't get to enjoy the experience, which right, right, you know what I'm saying. Um, then and then it's like mostly women in there, which is cool with me. <laughs> I like yeah, I would assume so. You know, <laughs> and I get to work by myself. I don't have to worry about you know uh, working with somebody else. Not necessarily. Not saying I don't like working with people, but right, you know, what, there's a little bit of an advantage. What's the experience that. like at Velvet? I don't, I don't know nothing about Velvet, it, but I know you um, be there a lot. <laughs> Velvet is different. The, there, you know, that crowd is so much older. So sometimes, like, it's kind of old school in there. Gotcha. So, like, with the, the women sit at the bar with their chest out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, just sitting there being pretty and shit. And then a dude walk up, you know, she starts to order a drink. And he says, No, baby, I got it. I got it. I'm going to take care <laughs> of that. You know what I'm saying? And then, but see, the problem with that is I have to remind them dudes that do that type of shit to make sure you tip me. Because I'd be like, because usually the woman that's sitting in front of me, I know her already. You know, mm-hmm. we built some kind of relationship. Like, so she tipped me good. And then this dude steps in and said, oh, baby, I got it. Because he's trying to work his way in. And I have to be like, hey, bro, so she was about to tip me a dub. So what you going to do? Ah. Uh. Because you going to already know her. So if you ain't tipping me, you already taking the L out the gate. And you ain't even had a conversation. Because a woman that tip ain't fucking with a nigga that don't. You're right. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And I see it all night. You know what I mean? Well, that's a good question. What's some of the things you see in there like that that give you a different perspective? I'm pr- and I'm pretty sure now we on this topic of bartending and the nightlife, I don't know if people 
care to make that connection, but that can also be a big connection to a lot of your posts and like how you view things because of the things you're seeing. Yeah, I get to see, I get to see people come in from sober, leave drunk. I get to see how they act when they when they're getting attention. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to see how they respond to it. I see how they spend money. How they call for attention. Right. You know? and so. I see if they, I can tell if they got money. You know what I'm saying? Despite your, how they may look. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. But, I, and I, I would just assume, because like I said, when we talk about this uh, gender-based post and like that, you're seeing, you're seeing men from a certain perspective in that in that regard, whether they trying to get this girl, trying to ball out, trying to impress this person. But you're also seeing women from, women from a certain perspective as well with, who they who they entertain and not entertain? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And they and they complete a lot of them contradict themselves if they're if they're a person that's active on social media. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, what that's they, most of them on social media. Yeah. Just just so we clear. What they present, all that, all that. I'm an independent. Da 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 da. I know for a fact that if, <laughs> if somebody if these dudes stop financing, these chicks cannot afford their lifestyle. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's facts. And see, like for me, I, I I would never disagree with something like that you're saying because I, me as a person, just knowing that I know that that's coming from a perspective of experience, something you've seen. You're seeing this on a day and night and night out basis, mm-hmm. and you're having these conversations with some of them as well. You know, mm-hmm. people start drinking, they talk a little too much. You know, so I I definitely can understand that, and it's kind of making a lot of the posts that you do make to me at least um, more understandable in the sense of. You're not speaking from a regular perspective. Like you're not going one place every day, coming home and just going online. Like, hmm, how can I, sh- how can I shit on women today? Yeah, and, and I really That's don't, never I don't the be case. pulling this out my it's ass. It's really just like, like, yo, this happened last night. I made this. And let me tell, let me tell my Facebook this because you, 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 you make connections based on how you feel and you think versus what you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Like and, I know women. I know for a fact women come to certain certain uh, venues here in Augusta looking for a man that's gonna spend money on them. And 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 it's and, and, and the that's kind of what velvet is. Ah, the sugar. Daddy. I hear a lot about velvet. I hear a lot about it. I hear, I hear it's for the older crowd, though. Definitely, I hear that a lot. So, but what do the older dudes like? Younger women, and what they do, spend their money on. Them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's the game. They ain't never going to yeah, change. Yeah, like I, I, I watch it. It's hilarious. I'd be like, "What's she doing with this sixty-five year old man? <laughs> she twenty-three, and then next year, you know, that sixty-five year old man walk up to the bar, whatever she want on me, bro. Yeah, see. About, about so far as tipping though, like wh- I want to really get into that. So like, mm-hmm. tell me of course your stance on it because you also post a, a good bit about tipping. So mm-hmm. what's your stance on it? How you feel about it? Whether you do tip well, don't tip well, don't tip at all. I need the whole. Well, I'm a tipper. I'm a tipper, and I was a tipper before. Uh, you did this a, kind of work, yeah. And because I believe in this, you got to tip your way to VIP. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, for example, um. My regulars and stuff like that, um, I take care of them so they take care of me. Like, for example, at studio, the nights I work there is a little slower so I can step outside. If I know what kind of car you drive, by the time you're inside, you're drink made. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Like, you don't, like have, to that. Add, like, you don't have to ask me for nothing. It's going to be there. You know what I mean? And as a result, I get bigger tips. You know what I'm saying? Um, but... I, yeah, I believe you tip your way to VIP. So, like for example, if you tip me good, I'm always see you. Ah, I, I get it now. So, how you tip? I'm, I'm not saying that it's. I'm just saying this. Pretty much, how you tip, you can be treated in different oh, settings. Absolutely. Okay, got Cause, you. Because as a bartender, no matter where I work at, you can't force me to make your drink. If mm. I decide right now I don't want to make your drink, I don't have to do it. You know. But what I'm saying? I, if Even I know you tip well, or you you normally tip me well. You could first. You, Man, there, there's you people first. who tip me so good they could order their drink via email if they mm. wanted to. Got you. And and I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that it almost sounds like prostitution a little bit. But um, yeah, cause I wonder. I, wonder, <laughs> I, I was gonna ask you what's the email you, but I'm not gonna ask you that. Like, so. You know, even in, in some of males or some of them females, you know, like I got partners that they tip me so good they can be across the club and I go like this. You need some? <laughs> and he'd be like. <laughs> you know, you and let me ask you that though. And and from in your from your experience, who tip better though? Women or women? Women or men? Ah, mm. uh, see, I can't. I okay, can't pick a side. that's not that's not gender. The type of person. Uh, 
that's hard to judge. Mm. That's hard to judge because you can never judge a person's pocket by the way they look. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I've gotten a hundred dollar tip from somebody I ain't think even had a hundred dollars. Place to live. Got you. You know what I'm saying? But then I've also not got a tip from a woman with Gucci and gold on. You know what I'm saying? So, and um, but as as the longer I'm in it, the more rapport I start building with people, the more familiar my face is. Um, you know, uh, the more familiar I become with them, so they my tips grow. You know, the same person that tipped me a dollar before probably tips me five now. Got you. You know what I'm saying? What's a? <laughs> I know it's gonna sound weird. So like tip and walk. I don't know how this works, but like what's a what's a what's a what would be a, a good average tip? Mm. And should they are, are you tipping per drink Or um, It depends what kind of drinker you are okay. I would say Like Me personally I'm a tip at the end You know what I'm saying Like I'm a tip one good time Depending Like if I'm sitting down somewhere I'm a tip once Cause I'm gonna have a tab Okay You know But I'm gonna make an, You gonna remember me Because I'm gonna tip you good Okay You know And for me it's like Okay say if I spend I don't know. Let's say for safe sake of conversation, twenty dollars, right? And uh, and it's a bartender that's slow as shit. You know what I'm saying? They move slow. They ain't recognize that you're standing there. They take forever. That person, if I spend twenty, they might get a dollar. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But the person that I can see working their ass off, you know what I'm saying? And they're making it a point to make sure they're taking care of us or whomever. I'm gonna tip. I might tip that person ten dollars. Okay, I see. I see. So I'm, now I'm, I'm getting a little gauge now of, of this. Um, as it pertains to uh, just being, I guess, like behind behind the bar, right? Well, no, let's take that back. Take waitressing, rather. Let's say Applebee's, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then bartending, whatever. For me, from listening to you, listening to you and uh, knowing that certification versus, you know, somebody who's there working, whatever, do you think, the same tipping rules go into play for somebody that is a waitress at a restaurant versus a bartender? Mm. Or do, do you think they should rather? Um, I, I, with waitresses like or, or a waiter, whomever, um, I base that on, like, do they keep my drink full? Like, do they come back and check all the time, check on us all the time? I got you. You know, um, are they, are they just making sure our experience is good? Did okay. they tell me your name? You know what I'm saying? Little stuff like that. You know, um, do they move? Do they move with a sense of purpose? Because and I, I, I asked that question because I know like a lot of times people get mad at waiters because the food is wrong. I'm like they didn't cook the food though. Right. But now that could be a result of them not checking the window fast enough. Okay. You know True. what I'm saying? But you don't know what kind of plays into that. But usually that's, that's, I'm thinking of, something simple like let's say you ask for a, a medium rare steak and it's well done or something like that. Like. Yeah, that's, that's typically not that's not order. something they can do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they put the order in wrong, that's something different. You right, know what I'm right. saying? But the food just not tasting or some way. But I see a lot of times people won't want to tip the waiter off something the cook did. Yeah, and that's I don't believe in that. No, that's not fair. And to then, me. but on, listening to you talk, I also feel like you should tip. I'm thinking now you tip bartender differently. For one, something like you got a certification. That's number one. So already. You know that whole saying like um, you don't pay for the time, you pay for the the knowledge, the education. When it's like a plumber or a right, lawnmower right, right. person, you know, I'm not paying the average person that just got a lawnmower. I might pay them forty dollars to do my lawn, but somebody that then got certified and can do this, I might pay them a hundred because they're a landscaper. Mm, and, and see, I wouldn't agree with that as bartending only because most of the bartenders I know aren't necessarily certified. But I've uh, I built relationships with them, or they they know what I drink already. Or they acknowledge me from a distance, like I like we like we mentioned. Um, that's kind of how you build it, you know. What was or, the certain- or say for example, like you come to me on a regular, right? And one night you pop up with a, a lady friend, right? That I that you know I don't know, you know. She's gonna look at you different because of how I treat you. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you walk in the door, man, what's happening? <laughs> You out here changing lives. I see she's it. Like, oh, man. She's like, oh my God, you know the bartender? <laughs> and then and then I'm like, man, hey. and then I, I stop what I'm doing to help you right now. True. You know what I'm saying? What y'all drinking? Are you getting your usual? Oh, man. You look at, you look, you're looked at in a certain light. Right. In, at that point. Right. Which, which helps you. Okay. I see, I see where you're going with that. I like that. I like you that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna walk in the building knowing Cook's gonna take care of me. 
So that, and that could be another reason why somebody would want to come where you at as well. So right. I see why now it's all play, going to play while while you post like I'm at here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Because I'm letting you know this is where I'm at tonight if you want to, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then on top of that, I can't control the masses. You know what I'm saying? I can I can probably have control over a small majority and that small that small group of people keep my pockets fed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So even if it's a little slower that night, I might have some of my regulars pull up just because I'm working that night. Okay. You know, and they, they might, they might, hey man, you know, you know, I'm always come through a rock with you, bro. Dub, fifty, hundred, you know, something else like that. So, um, when you, when you, when you bartending and tipping, them, how you feel when somebody don't tip? Like, what's your? Um, uh, it depends on how often you do it. Like, there's there's a guy like I I don't know his name because I don't like I hate when he come to the bar. But Person that don't tip. Yeah. Cause he he'll he'll buy like a Bud Light all night, one at a time, and at the other day three fifty he will hand me three dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> if you call this and change all that, I, 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 he pulls out a coin pouch, bro. <laughs> a fucking coin <laughs> pouch, dog. No lie, but it, it really be the ones that, that frustrate me that run me to death. You know what I'm saying? They're like, hey, let me get this, and then I go get it, and then they come back, man, hey, let me get this, and then I make it. And then they, you know what I'm saying? They're not hitting me with, hey, let me get three Hennessy and Cokes and an Amaretta Sour. You're just telling you, it is long, one, 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 yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, like you're, you're, you're messing my flow up because I came to you, I made your one drink, and now I've brought it to you. Transaction's supposed to be done now. Now you're asking me to do another drink for you after four other people don't, that don't walk past. Just was like, hey, 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 let me get, hey, cook, B, hey, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> And I have to, sometimes I have to coach them. <laughs> like, hey, look, I'd be like, hey, bro, look, don't run me to death tonight. Get all, I know you got people with you. Get all y'all drinks at one time. I'd rather, I'd rather you tell me seven and I forget two than you wanting me to death. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the most frustrating part. And then you done spend $120 and give me, give me what, a dollar? For real? Man, what? That shit happens. That shit happens all to all of us. You know a what I'm dollar? saying? A dollar? I, I kid you not. Or some people might you might they might run up a tab, hundred dollars, tip five. You like, man, you bust a broke ass nigga. <laughs> hey, man, like, that's I, what goes through our how, minds. How, how does that make you like, look at people who on social media, let's say I'm like, this is so cute. To to bring it back exactly to bring it yeah. back to social media. Like how do you look at people that are on social media and pretend or post like they haven't, but then when it comes to tipping from what you from you dealing with them, they tipping a dollar, two dollars. Um, I, I'm just slower to get to you. No more VIP. Yeah, you you just you you fade to the back. You might catch. A, I've seen there's people I, that we don't that uh, frequent. You know the clubs I work at, and we as a as a team know they don't tip. So they might be at the bar like this. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, man, why you won't help me? Cause you don't tip. Got you. So tipping and tipping is that important? That's in nightlife. I would assume yeah, you want to feel important, right? Because we we busting our ass. Sometimes we breaking a sweat back up. You know what I'm saying? We I was gonna ask with, you that. Like, how we do you? F- with, we dealing how? with getting flirted with. We dealing with. We dealing with people yelling, cussing. You know what I'm saying? Being disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff. How do you How do you maneuver when it's like super busy? Like, is it because and because you like what you do? I'm asking. Like, mm-hmm. is there a time when you it's so busy you just you just frustrated? It's Do you mess drinks up or like oh, yeah. you know shit, man? Look, I, I've always said if you ain't breaking, you ain't bartending. So like, I, if you breaking some shit or spilt the drink or something, <laughs> hey, that means you moving. Okay, okay, you know what I'm saying? It happens. How is it common to, <clears throat> to mess drinks up? Like, is it common or to mess them up? Or somebody say, oh, this ain't right or this ain't strong mm. enough. I don't drink, but I, I've heard it a lot. A lot of people saying, "Hey, bro, make it strong," and I'd be like, because drinks. They're made with recipes, you know what I'm saying? So ah. the, the amount of liquor is measured to a particular, you know what I'm saying, amount. So when we make the drink, if you sip it and you like, oh, this ain't, oh, let me get a little more. What you mean, bro? Like, that's the way a drink isn't supposed to taste nasty. Yeah. It's yeah. supposed to taste good. But a lot of people, they want to taste the alcohol, you know what I'm saying? And they may be like, bro, make it strong. I'm like, nigga, make my tip big. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So and I guess that that's kind of why I was getting there earlier. I was like, well, with the whole uh, waiter waitresses versus bartending, y'all kind of the notice 
no disrespect. Y'all kind of a waitress slash waiter and a cook at the same time. Right. No right, pun intended right, to you. Right. I know what you. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> saying cooks and talking to you sometimes. <laughs> I, but, um, but y'all y'all all of that in one. Mm-hmm. So like, even so, if they don't have to drink, they not saying that it'll be y'all fault, but it's more so the bartender's issue than it would be like the waiter's issue at a restaurant. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like we're we're the the starting. Y'all finish. making it. Y'all chefing yeah. it up. Y'all y'all receiping it up. Yeah. And y'all getting it to them. You know? I, I won't lie. Sometimes I mess stuff up or I put a wrong ingredient in there or you know or I'd be like, damn, they asked for crown and coke, not crown and cranberry. You know what I'm saying? That happens every once in a while. When you're bartending, do it make you want to drink more? Like do it make you want to drink? Like you making these drinks, do you like I want to try this? Um, Sometimes, I mean, most of the drinks, like, as a bartender, you, you kind of narrow down, like, your selection. You you become more of, like, I don't know, real particular about what you end up drinking. So, I drink a lot of straight liquor. Gotcha. I don't drink a lot of mixed drinks like that. Now, uh, what I do do is, like, people buy me shots, and I take them with them. But, again, that's part of the part of the experience. Because I'm, I'm, I'm building a rapport with you. We're right. having a good time. And, ultimately, my tip jar get bigger. I, and I asked that them because I don't know why I compared it to, but like I ain't really care for like the blimpy subway when I was younger. I'm, when I'm from, we just get a hero from the store. So I, when I started working there, I would make the sandwiches, and like as I'm making them, like they start to look good. You know, you know, you know how you get better at something, it just oh, start yeah, looking yeah, good. Yeah. And it's like I might need to try this. I don't know. So I thought maybe like you make these no, drinks, and you're like, damn, I made now this. Now what I do do is uh, I kind of to your point is that I'll have people try stuff. Like got regulars. you, got like, you. I'd be like, hey. um, I made I made this drink at home. I want you to try it. Or I seen this recipe. I want to see what you think. You know. So I'll experiment and stuff like that um, with some of my regulars. Some people come in and be like, just make me something. You always you always take care of me. You know what I'm saying? Every time you make something, it's good. Since you bartend so much, do you still enjoy club life when you're not bartending? Not as much. Not as much. Do you feel um, like is it, do you feel like you just it's I'm near too much now, so I don't want to be mm-hmm. there. I like to go, I like bars more, like a true bar. You know, I got the option to sit down for free, <laughs> you mm, know. Gotcha. Um, I can have a conversation without yelling at the person next to me. You know, I can freely be social without bumping and worrying about my shoes being stepped on. Or, <laughs> you know, the music ain't so loud, I'm screaming. You know, I can't hear and shit like that. Um so I'm more of a bar guy when I'm not at the when I'm not at the club. As it pertains to bartending, though, know, like what like what what would be next for you? Like what you think is next? I know you mm. you do your own thing now, but like what, what kind of goals you got as far as this is concerned? Mm, of course, I don't necessarily want to be behind the bar the rest of my life. So to me, it's uh, ownership. You know what I mean? Uh, open my own. You know, that would be the goal. Um, you have your bartender at a strip club? No, nah, I'd like to though. I don't know. I, just, I don't, to, just for the experience to see what it's like. Yeah, I asked that because you no, know P Valley coming back, so I ain't know if you. <laughs> but I, um, I mean, I'm built for stuff like that because I, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't phased by gotcha. you know, naked chicks walking around. Um, but fuck, I had a. Would this be like? Would this be considered like one of your favorite jobs you've ever had or not? Nah? Yeah, yeah, only because um. Shit, I make. I mean, I don't want to talk about no money, but <laughs> I mean, for the amount of time I actually work, I make a lot of money. Got you, got you. You know what I'm saying? In a very short amount of time. And I was assume you're doing something you love doing. Like you did something you, you said yeah, you had an interest yeah. in doing. You started doing I it. I can. I, it's almost like being um like an independent contractor. Mm. You know what I mean? That's why I work at three different places. You know. But uh, so in all all these clubs, they okay with you working in different spots, or like it's just kind of you own you your own man, so it's whatever. Um, well, I've kind of built my schedule in a certain way where you know it's pretty much the same every week. So it's, I pretty much work a full time job. Outside of bars, do you do anything else? I mean, I still be doing, I still be podding. I, I, I got so much ADHD right now, though. Oh my god, <laughs> it's terrible. Um, but it gives me a lot of freedom to um. Be with my daughter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, pick her up from school every day. We doing homework every day. If I worked a nine to five, wouldn't Can't do her. that. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can take off pretty much whenever I want. You know. Um, That's dope. Yeah. It's almost like being a mechanic. 
Like, I ain't never met a broke mechanic in my life. <laughs> you know, like, he always got money. Definitely. Always. Somebody yeah. call you broke. Somebody always want to drink. <laughs> exactly. That nightlife, they ain't going nowhere. Now, the tough part is, like, sometimes you can spiral down this hole of, like, just drinking all the time, which can be tough, you know. Before you, but you, you started um, bartending after COVID really hit, right? Uh, technically during COVID. Well, yeah, yeah, t- yeah. T- okay, cool, question. cool. But that was good then because I, I was going. I would ask how that transition yeah, was. I had the time, so like I wasn't working. You know, I was chilling. So I was like, shoot, sixty hours. They said they got the option. You can do like the the one week class. I got number time. I did it in a week. It was just a nine to five for a week straight. Oh damn! Took the took the national test, passed. Came back certified, and I was working two weeks later. What um, so what what what's next with like the 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 photography? Are you still doing that, or you kind of yeah, fell I back still from do it? it? Um, I'm not sure what direction I want to go with as far as like the photography thing. You I know? mean, it's still something good that you that you do. I'm just I'm yeah, just wondering because um, I like I like doing I'm I don't like doing studio photography. Uh, I, I don't. To me, that doesn't, like, capture a moment. Like, I'd rather do, like, candid background, you know, BTS yeah. like, kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of your, lot of your, lot of your pics be behind the scene type yeah, kind of thing. I look so. at them, and, like, it get, they give me a feeling. You know, it brings me back to that moment. Or if I wasn't there, you should feel like you should have been there. Or you can feel whatever whatever was going on in that moment in the photo. What about vlogging? You, you, do, you plan to start that back up, or it's kind of just something you were just testing for the moment? Um... I'm going to do it again. My time management just sucks right now. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. My time management sucks right now. You probably got too much of it outside of what you're doing. So You know, and, and it's like, you, I'm almost like a vampire. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I only work at night. So I see five in the morning, six days out the week. You know, almost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my time management right now just sucks. But a good thing is, I mean, on, t- t- you know, a good, on, a, on a great note, though, like, even with all the bartending and everything you're doing, um, and life is going good for you, um, you got a nice car, you know what I'm saying? I um, <laughs> appreciate it. I always wanted to touch on that because I know, like, um, you came up from, like, you, you kind of stayed down, you just kind of went oh, yeah. and got your own joint. Yeah, because, um, man, like, people, you know, I used to be, like, the the popular guy. I used to be, like, one of those guys. Now you're the popular bartender. Uh, I'm working my way towards it. <laughs> you know, Mo, Moses got the number. Moses and Turbo probably got the number one spot right now. I heard of Turbo. I heard. Yeah, yeah, I heard that name. Um, but it was uh, it was a time where like for my age, I was way ahead of my time. Mm. You know what I mean? I was up. You know, couldn't tell me shit. You know, joined a fraternity, went to college. You know, I was living in a two story house. You know, what I'm saying all kind of crazy stuff at under twenty five. You know what I'm saying? And then there was a time where like I had this. Just, 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 I was just taking call, L's. Call that life. Man, what? <laughs> Comes at you fast. Yeah. And, um, yeah, shit. I got car repo at one point. Credit was fucked up. You know what I mean? And, and I had to grind it out. You know what I'm saying? Lost the relationship and fell apart. That's life. You know, what goes up, go, comes down. Yeah, so, so it, it, it's definitely been an uphill battle for, for a few years. You know what I'm saying? And it's good to be like afloat. You feel like you're in a good space now, a good place? Like Yeah. And and ultimately like I'm just looking to get better every day. If I can just get a little better than I was the day before, then cool. And I feel like I feel like that's what life do. I feel like life tests you that way too. Like it give you a lot, it take from you, and then like it's up to you to decide how you're gonna move going forward from there, you know. Right, right. So like a lot of times and a lot of people don't get to experience life that way. They be down all your life or they be up all your life. Some people are lucky like that. But then you got people like, you know, me, you who you could be up and come down, and then now when you come back up, you're gonna move a little different just in case because you know I can easily fall down. Right, you know? right. And um, it just help you stay grounded, that's all. You know, help you stay grounded and, and no, keep for grinding. For sure, for sure. You know, and, and the older we get, man, like, my, I don't give a fuck. It's just going. It's, 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 Certain things it, don't matter no more. It's just, don't care. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff I used to just let bother me. I don't, I don't. That might be why my personality is like that on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I, I want to ask that too. Like when when you when you are bartending, are people not asking you about the post you make, or say you commented and you met a um, diss somebody? Do, do you ever get do you ever get stopped by in person? Like hey, you said this on me on social media. Oh or? man, so I was at Limelight, right? And I 
come in. I look across the room. I see my homegirl. I've known her for a few years. We used to work together. She looks at me. She get. I go over there. I speak. She gives me this warm ass embrace. Right. You know. Oh, Brandon, I missed you. Da, 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 da. And there's a young lady that she's with that I only know from that from Facebook. Got you. The girl looks up at me with that. Girl, you fuck with this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Like she turned her nose up at me so nasty. I think you made a post about that too. Yeah, I was like, yo, she's dead serious. And I, I mean, I laughed at her because I was like, yo, like you, you for real. Take that Facebook stuff really serious. And then I looked her up. I said, damn, she even unfriended me. (laughs) (laughs) But do you remember why she was mad? Like, Um, like what what was it that probably made her mad? I don't care. I'll talk about it. I'll say it. So there's this girl. She's of a certain uh, nationality, right? Okay. Um, same nationality as Bernie's Burgos. Who? Bernie's. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Same nationality. So their skin tone the same. Their hair texture is kind of the same. So I I was, I was seen her on my story because she thick. You know what I'm saying? You know, we don't look at you know, She's yeah. shapely. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at her story over time and I'm like, okay, she posts herself and then she posts Bernice. Mm. And then she posts herself and then she posts Bernice. And then she posts herself and then Bernice, herself, Bernice. So one day I was just like, do you feel like you look like her? <laughs> what you got going on, man? Why, why you do that for me? <laughs> I mean. And I'm pretty sure she felt the tone in how you said it. Like, as if you saying like, you my, don't, but why do you feel yeah, like you do? Like, I think it was, it was between that and some my status. I think I, the straw that broke the camel's back was the, the do you think like you got you. I think that's what it was. But shit, I, the lady walked up on me and asked me, "Was I fucking Darren Fleet?" Yeah, I seen that the other day. I, don't even know who, I didn't even know who that nigga was. <laughs> I had to Google this nigga. I was, a, I was offended. <laughs> but I mean, but I think shit like that is funny to me. I, maybe I have a, just a dark personality of, of sorts, but it is what it is. I mean, it worked. It worked for who worked for, and don't it don't work but for people, who don't work for. To answer your question, though, people do um, like come to me, see me at the bar, and we have those kind of conversations. You know, male and female. Some dudes walk up and be like, nigga, I fucks with you, girl. <laughs> but I can't, I can't say nothing because she be on my shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some women will be like, I don't like what you said. And I'll be like, what you ain't like about it? You know, and then we'll just have a healthy conversation, keep it moving, take a shot. I think sometimes the tone on social media can also be um, misunderstood as well when you don't know the person which is yeah. you know and I know I've just noticed that the people that are most offended are the people that just don't know me personally and which is why I mean we, we all we all do it but that's kind of why in social media you should, you should probably add the people you know if you want to <laughs> right. talk to, you know what I'm saying I <laughs> to ask, control like this yeah <laughs> if I say something and I, don't, and I don't say lol my man's ain't gonna take me serious but somebody that don't know me might be like why are you mad for? I'm like, yeah, I'm not. Like, but but then, see, it, then it, it just go down here from there. Did you see an exclamation mark or something? Did I say it in all caps? Exactly. Like Kanye? <laughs> so I definitely can, I, I can see that. But I always tell you, like, just knowing you, like I said, um, I, I always tell you, like, you, you the same regardless. It's just, just thought, but talking to you now and you, you, you having that nightlife, you having that nightlife experience. And I think people make um, statuses or have these, uh, perceptions based on what they've seen and what they've been through. So you never know why somebody making that status or why somebody saying that because they might be talking about one situation though. I just don't know that, you know? And, and I've noticed just a lot of people, they're, they're more worried about the response that they're going to get from somebody else than actually what's being said. When you post up, what I do is I save it and then I come back like 10 hours later because I'd be like, oh yeah, it's the, the one. Built yeah, up. it's the one. When I go on my break, I'm like, I'm almost entertainment. Instead of watching something, I just go down. I see all the status. I'm like, okay, this is funny. Yeah, you know, so. Or I might, t- I might text somebody that laughed at it and be like, oh, why you ain't comment, though? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, 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 just to be like, funny. Why you ain't saying nothing? Well, uh. Because people, like I said, people don't want to be put in a spot. And so, like I said, I've seen a lot of status where people have been put in a spot and stuff like that. So it'd be but funny. The, but the people I debate with the most are the ones who add add more than what was said. Right. Right. Like you're you're saying something that was not in the text, but and sometimes people take it personally. They just they just start attacking you. Oh yeah, they feel hit dog holler every time. The worst one, I think, I see somebody say some something, something, and they kind of send you that you was gay and this that and third, and they just went hard. And I was like, damn, it was funny to me at the time because, because I'm like, it had nothing to do with what was being talked about. Right. So it's like that's when you know I won. Yeah. So you know the moment you go off, um, go start getting into your feelings, and you know, and then you're calling names. 
We're not even on the topic anymore. Yeah, just give much. up. It's okay to opt out, yo. Like, <laughs> he said opt out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I argue with facts and statistics, not not feelings, because feelings aren't facts. That's funny, man. That's funny. But look, man. Um, I really I, I wanted to be one kind of one off. I got something I'm trying to do. I'm trying to have a theme going here, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about bartending. I felt like it's some something, something different too. Um, a lot of people don't talk to males about bartending for some reason. Yeah. It's always they always pick the once you like you said the pretty women yeah. to do it. I've done that in the past, but um, not like on this level. So yeah, I definitely want to talk to you about that. And I think I gained some 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 insight on that life as well. Um, bartending. If I'm gonna pick one thing in the club to do, I probably would do that because I want to. I want to. I want to get. I want to get paid. I mean, but and most of the bartenders. Aren't full time bartenders? They, we, most of us do something else. Yeah, you know see, what I'm see. So it's like if you can if you can take six hours out your day, come home but, with a few hundred bucks. Hey. But for bartending, like you get a, I'm pretty sure you get a set price to just to barton, or you just, it's solely off tips. Um, yeah, you get an hourly. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. You I got you, got you. And then you the rest is tips. Dang, okay, that's that's though. DJ got to step up, man. That's that's kind of wild. Yeah, because uh. Just hearing so many prices, you know. I mean, honestly, I, I feel like DJs and Augusta are underpaid, but I think that's a that's a totally different uh, conversation. Kid just said the same thing. He said the same thing. Um, I, I would agree. I guess let me ask let me ask you this, Matt Fest, in this, what 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 do you think are the most important components of the nightlife? When you think mm. about the DJs, the bartenders, the bodyguards, the bouncers, all that all that type of stuff, bottle girls. The most important is, as far as like from from the business standpoint. Business standpoint. From, business standpoint. Um, I probably say DJ, man. DJ, DJ is a, a big deal. You know, a lot of these DJ, some of these DJs got a real big following. Okay. You okay. know, um, I think it starts there. And then of course your your staff. You know, because we're the ones who gonna determine if you come back for real, for real. You know, because you might not. If you hate me, you might not be like, you might be like fuck studio. Yeah. You know what true. I'm saying. Or if you just get a bad experience from any of us, you might not come back no more. You know, so um, that's the second part. And then, um, I don't know, maybe the kind of clientele you're trying to cater to, you know. Um, are the, are the, are the um, security not that important? Oh, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. The, uh, yeah, good security is important. Okay. And... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, at Club Velvet. You know, follow me on social media at bcooks underscore eighty eight, the Be Safe Podcast, and who shot you underscore. Appreciate your time, bro. Oh man, thank you for having me, my brother. You know it. <laughs>